This is Kelly Hill, technology reporter for RCR Wireless News. I'm here with Andreas Rissler of Rodi and Schwartz. How are you? I'm very good. Good, good. to see you. Good. We're at this year's 5G Innovation Summit yes. here in Del Mar, California. It's that time of the year again, it right? It is. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you just got done um, sort of giving us an overview of the transition to 5G. You talked about four pillars of the technology. Can you give us some key takeaways from your discussion? Yeah, absolutely. So um, like you said, we, we from our perspective, it's four pillars uh, that, that uh, we need to uh, transition over to uh, f uh, 5G. The one is, of course, Spectrum, the obvious one that everybody talks about. Um, second was, of course, uh, massive MIMO and beamforming, also a known thing. I think um, I put the emphasis a little bit on the network architecture side this time, um, just because of, um, I think, um, if you don't have a 5G core network, you can't really address uh, all the 5G applications, Absolutely. right? And um, in that sense, we talked a little bit about uh, network slicing, about virtualization, software-defined mm -hmm. uh, networking. Um, but generally speaking, we talked about all these four pillars, and we hope that we address all of them, all the challenges with the free workshop that we have organized for this event. Okay, great. Um, one thing that you delved into a little bit that I'd like to hear a little bit more about is you talked about subcarrier spacing and what that means in terms of interference, um, it, you know, and some of the challenges that are associated with that in terms of a, a dual connectivity uh, or, or multi-connectivity context for 5G. Can you talk a little bit about the, what that is and, and what the implications yeah, are? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Kelly. So, um, well, we have uh, sub different subcarrier spacing because we're moving up in frequency, mm -hmm. um, but also um, subcarrier spacing is basically uh, uh, proportional to the symbol duration, right? Inversionally proportional. So that means basically if I have a wider subcarrier spacing, I have shorter symbols, mm -hmm. so I have lower latency, right? As simple as that. Um, so uh, with 5G and R, we will have 15, 30, 60, 120, and 240 kilohertz. Okay. Um, the later ones more for the millimeter wave space. Okay. Um, and the challenge that you that you're mentioning is basically mixed numerology. That means basically uh, now we will have a, a, um, a carrier yeah, coming from a base station um, that has certain bandwidth parts that could use different numerology. And um, I think the need for that is really to addressing these different use cases, right? So, for instance, enhanced mobile broadband, what we see in the market in the trials today, they're using typically 30 kilohertz, yeah? mm -hmm. uh, compared to LTE 15 kilohertz, so we have uh, twice as uh, uh, less symbol uh, duration. Um, shorter latency, so to speak, uh, and then you have uh, probably a bandwidth part for the URLCC case, probably autonomous driving, right, that uses typically or is associated with 60 kilohertz. Okay. The interference that you mentioned is, is now coming like if you have that one signal, one carrier with different bandwidth parts, with different numerologies, mm -hmm. then where they connect, there's basically an interference situation. Mm -hmm. yeah? Also, it's important now, uh, how are we telling the mobile to sync to the one or the other? Um, in RAN 1 right now, as far as I understand it, is um, uh, a device can only connect to one of these bandwidth parts at any given time, okay. but it can be virtually connected to multiple network slices on the, on the core network ah, side. Ah, so, yes. as you can see, it gets easily complicated, not only, only on the RF side, but also on the network side. Okay. Great. Well, looking forward to hearing a lot more about uh, some of the interesting things going on in 5G today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.